The global pandemic sure threw us a curveball, didn't it? But as a result, more of us than ever are now more interested than ever in being more self-sufficient than ever. More of us are growing our own food, utilizing solar energy, collecting rainwater, all that good stuff. But did you know that you can also make your very own renewable energy right in your own backyard using nothing more than your own kitchen scraps? I'm not talking about composting. This is actually better than composting. Actually even better than vermiposting, where people accelerate the decomposition with the help of worms. But with none of the possible mess or any of the restrictions. It turns out you can turn those same food wastes, actually even more of them, including the stuff not recommended for compost bins like meat and dairy and fat and grease, into a valuable natural liquid fertilizer and clean renewable energy. And you can do it right at home. The secret lies in harnessing the hidden powers of the archaea, the most ancient life forms on Earth, which you and me and every other animal still have living in our guts, and let them do the heavy lifting, just like they've done in nature for literally billions of years. Thanks to these safe microbes, these ancient allies, literally everything organic and once alive, with the exception of what we call lignocellulose, basically woody stuff like branches and twigs and brown leaves, can be turned into fuel and fertilizer without any complex machinery and without needing any electricity, chemicals, or processing heat. Whether it's the environmental benefits you're after, which could be a whole video unto itself, societal improvements, lowering the cost of your energy, or increasing your self-sufficiency. Even if you're off-grid and don't have access to modern infrastructure or services, we can all benefit from learning a little bit more about how giving your food waste in a controlled way to the anaerobic microbes with whom we share this planet, using the simple process of biodigestion done at the home scale, can help us create our own energy and grow our own healthy food easily, inexpensively, and with nothing more than the stuff we normally just throw away. Right now, as you know, most of our organic wastes go straight to landfill, and the microbes there generate methane emissions that act as potent greenhouse gases, estimated to be 25 to 80 times more powerful than CO2. It's all harm and no benefit. But imagine that same amount of methane, the methane from your food waste, can instead be safely captured and stored at home and used to offset the even more problematic fossil-derived emissions caused by other food fuels. We biogas practitioners use our food waste-derived biogas right in our own kitchens and garages and backyards in place of propane or fossil-derived natural gas or electricity. We use the gases that all food waste creates through decomposition to cook, heat water, and light lamps. It certainly helped us through one of Florida's famous hurricanes when the stores were all out of propane and gasoline, firewood, and charcoal. We had light. But even without considering resiliency and disaster preparedness, you have to ask yourself, why would I want to throw away so-called food waste, a perpetual and omnipresent source of fuel and fertilizer that I already paid for and own? And then, have to go out and buy these products with my hard-earned cash from somebody else. In the past, you might have felt forced to participate in the broken cradle-to-grave system of net resource losses because there didn't seem to be many options. Today, we can all be part of the zero-waste or closed-loop circular economy that scientists and development specialists and futurists talk about as an essential solution to everything from climate change to ocean pollution. So why have you never heard of this type of system before, you ask? Well, even though anaerobic digestion has been used for decades and even centuries in other parts of the world, there have been a lot of misperceptions about how they work, and most people still aren't aware of three important facts. One, that food waste is the best feedstock for biodigestion, not manure. So you don't need to live on a farm to have or use a biodigester. Two, that food waste is a form of safe, accessible solar energy and has so much stored sunshine in it that you don't need a big digester to get useful amounts of gas from it. And three, that recent improvements in materials and design have enabled household and community scale commercial systems to be shipped anywhere in the world so they can be used in residential areas. 
Unlike the big concrete pits you may have heard about on farms or the massive holding tanks you see at wastewater treatment plants, these new transportable small-scale commercial systems are easy to install by anyone, no engineering experience necessary. They set up in less than an hour and they're super low maintenance, requiring at most an easy filter replacement every six months or so. Easier than changing an oil filter on your lawnmower or your car or the water filter in your sink. Ta-da! And they're closed to the air so they don't attract any pests. The nutrient solution that they produce when they're fed what used to be called garbage is rendered odor-free through simple aeration upon exiting the system, letting you complete an echo cycle in your own backyard. It's the kind of fertilizer that people pay big money for at the garden store. You can think of the biogas that these digesters make as dragon farts, if you like. It really is the same process. But don't worry, most systems have a filter inside that removes the slight odor of hydrogen sulfide and protects the cook stove from corrosion so that it lasts a long, long time. This system actually comes with a stove that was specifically designed for biogas. But if you use your biodigester with a different stove, it can be altered easily in just a few minutes. We do this by widening the orifice and closing up the air inlets, the openings or the venturi tubes that allow air to mix with denser fuels like propane. Biogas, which is also referred to as biomethane or renewable natural gas, RNG, is a form of natural gas, CH4, that still has the original carbon dioxide in it, averaging between 30 and 45 percent, so it's a whole lot safer. And even if you don't have a filter, biogas never has any odor when it's burned. And it has no smoke either. <laughs> the slight odor of the raw gas is actually an asset. Just as the petroleum company puts odor-making sulfur compounds back into natural gas and propane bottles to make people aware if there is a leak, natural biogas already has that smell. So you would always know if there is gas seeping where you don't want it. And the nice thing is that the biomethane in biogas is lighter than air and quickly and safely disperses even when somebody has left the stove on mistakenly without lighting it. While the carbon dioxide in biogas is the same stuff found in flame extinguishers, heavier than air, and falls out. It's the cleanest fuel next to hydrogen. And of course, it's far, far safer. Biogas contains about 35% inflammable carbon dioxide, and this mellows the flame so it's much, much safer than fossil natural gas. When it burns, it turns into CO2 and water vapor. Unlike propane, it doesn't pool on the floor, and unlike propane, to say nothing of kerosene, charcoal, or firewood, it doesn't blacken your pots or your pans or your walls or your lungs, for that matter. It burns without any soot at all. So when you think about it, your biogas system really is the best family pet that you could have. Your domestic dragon eats all of your leftovers without any mess or smell. <laughs> turns them into a convenient liquid compost that enables you to grow healthy food again. And when it discreetly passes gas, which it does by creating a bubble roughly every five seconds or so, bloop, 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 it can make up to two hours of clean, renewable cooking gas per day from just six liters of food waste. That's a small bucketful. How cool is that? And you don't have to do anything more than scrape and rinse your plate. That means no more messy garbage, ever. So let's talk about biology for a second. The pet dragon metaphor is a good one to keep in mind. A biodigester is an animal, not a machine. You don't want to overfeed it. For a system this size, that means no more than about 1.6 gallons of food waste a day. That's one bucket. If you overfeed it, your dragon will get acid indigestion. And just like when you get acid indigestion, we have to bring the stomach pH back to neutral. To do that, we use the same stuff that you use for swimming pools and for your stomach. Bicarbonate of soda works really well. So you just feed it some baking soda and then wait for the pH to neutralize and the microbes to bounce back. You see, 
Its insides, like yours, are powered by an entire ecosystem of living beings, microorganisms that efficiently biodegrade organic material, really everything except the branches, sticks, hay, and brown leaves I talked about earlier, and break it down into that nutrient-rich organic soup and that clean, energy-rich gas. But it does take time for the ecosystem to get established. So the day that you set up your biodigester, you'll want to fill it with water and introduce a starter culture of the right microbes. There are many ways to do this. In the 12 years that I've been working with home-scale biodigesters around the world, I've started my systems with everything from cow manure and horse manure, pig manure and goat manure, to lake mud and pond muck, and even with Ridex and other septic system powders. As I've said, the active ingredients are the most ancient microbes on Earth, found in poop, the kingdom of the Archaea. And they live in all of us, right guys? In all of our intestines, in that of all animals. And they exist everywhere on Earth, wherever the sun doesn't shine and wherever there isn't any air. We've even started two of them on fish poop and dolphin and manatee poop from the local aquarium and filled them with salt water. Yes, that works too. Once you've introduced the microbes into the biodigester, you need to let them settle into their new home and reproduce. There are really four kinds of microbes that do the so-called dirty work. There are hydrolytic bacteria that use water to break bigger molecules into smaller ones. There are acidogenic bacteria, which, as their name implies, take those little molecules and make stinky acids out of them. These are the ones that make rotting food waste smell so bad and burn your throat when you throw up. Then there are the acetogenic bacteria that turn those stinking molecules into acetate, acetic acid, basically vinegar and carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So very quickly, the stuff that would smell bad is reduced into something that merely smells sour. And then there are the methanogens at the end of the chain. The methanogens are the microbes that turn the acetate into methane. They make a little bit of hydrogen sulfide, but the end result, unfiltered, smells just a little bit like the Everglades, like a Florida swamp. And that smell goes away completely once it exits the system and has been exposed to air. Are there any downsides to having a home biogas system? Well, I've had them as my house pets for over 12 years, and I've had them in places as diverse as Egypt, Alaska, Germany, New York, Portugal, and Florida. In cold climates, yes, I've had to keep them warm because like any reptile, these dragons are cold-blooded and sluggish and they need to be kept really at mammalian body temperature to function best. There are different options for keeping them warm via external heating mechanisms. You can contain them in a greenhouse, you can put heating coils in, all that good stuff. But of course they work best where the outside temperature is warm year round. And even if you don't live in a warm climate, since a value is the way that home biogas completely eliminates your waste problem and always makes great garden fertilizer, there really is no downside to it. You use it as your way to eliminate the problems associated with your garbage all year and use the gas to barbecue in the warmer months. You get the fertilizer all year round. So take it from a Florida man who's been living with domestic dragons for over a decade. By turning all of your food waste into fuel and fertilizer, I reckon this is the best gift that you can make both to humanity and to your own home. Whether you want to be a sustainability superhero or you simply want to eliminate the cost and problems associated with food waste, home biogas systems are good for you and good for the planet. It's simple, it's safe, it's clean, and let's face it, it's sexy. We've been working with and taming these domestic dragons for over 13 years and keep several around our home. And I reckon once you've seen all they can do, yeah, you'll want one too.